Hey everybody, this time on Science with the Kovaches. Why is it raining outside today? Hi everyone. It's George and Elliot here, and uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the weather, specifically high pressure systems and low pressure weather systems. High pressure air molecules and low pressure air molecules, and how they cause weather on our planet and bring us rain. And this was all started and uh, came to my mind because of the really cool barometer experiment that Dr. K taught us about the other day that showed us the difference in the air molecules in the jar versus the difference in the air molecules pressure all around the jar. So here's a diagram that shows air molecules. The blue ones that are packed really close together are high pressure molecules. And the red ones on the left that are spread farther apart are low pressure air molecules. And when we talked about the law of energy that states energy always follows the path of least resistance, this shows the high pressure molecules moving towards the low pressure molecules as they are less pressure, so less resistance. That's why the arrow on top shows the wind moving in the direction from high to low. Okay, so let's try and find a more fun way to demonstrate how high pressure moves to low pressure. Oh, no. Let's go outside and do a science experiment. Knock, knock. This is high pressure inside the balloon, moving to low pressure outside the balloon. <laughs> that works! <laughs> Okay, so um, that was pretty much one of the most fun and simplest or easiest ways to demonstrate how high pressure moves towards low pressure, how high pressure air molecules move towards low pressure air molecules, how energy follows the path of least resistance. The high pressure air molecules forced inside of that balloon and all super pressurized in there, shooting out of the balloon towards the low pressure that surrounds the air. So that was a good time. Okay, so all that's great, but how do low pressure weather systems and high pressure weather systems affect us? How do they make it rain? Well, high pressure weather systems, if you have one of those over your state where you live, we live in California, it's just going to be the nicest, most beautiful day. You're going to want to go to the beach, you're going to want to go on a bike ride, on a hike, because the visibility is going to be great, and it's going to be a crystal clear, no cloud in the sky kind of day where the sun's just shining and it's just really pretty outside. If a low pressure system is over where you live, it's going to be the opposite of that. The visibility is going to be very poor um, and it may be raining because low pressure systems, all that energy is moving towards the low pressure system, path of least resistance. They are like vacuums. They vacuum in all the moisture, all the heat. A good way to envision one of those is a pinwheel. Low pressure systems north of the equator spin counterclockwise. The equator, you may ask. This is the equator. It's a line that divides the Earth into the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, which just means north half and south half or top half and bottom half. So we live north of the equator. So north of the equator, low pressure systems spin counterclockwise. Now what's really cool is the center of the low pressure system is the lowest part of the pressure. It gets a little bit stronger as it gets toward the outside. So that's like the center of the vacuum. Now how these things look from space is kind of like this. Just spinning. And as they move along across the ocean, they vacuum up moisture and heat. And as they pull those moisture and heat molecules up through the middle, they go up in the atmosphere and they condense. Now condensation is just a fancy word for turning into a cloud, going from gas to liquid or gas to visible moisture. Visible moisture is a cloud just suspended in the atmosphere. So as all that cloud begins to form, it gets bigger and bigger and gathers more and more energy. And that's when it starts to rotate more and more. The more
more energy, the more rotation. A little bit of rotation might just be a storm. A lot of rotation, a lot of energy, it could be a hurricane. So let's go look at uh, what this actually looks like on the weather radar and how it affects us and see if we can make some, uh, some theories. Okay guys, this is the Earth. This is the United States of America where we live in right now. Now, we live down here in this little corner right under this hand. We live in San Diego. This is a very zoomed out view of the Earth from space. Now, we've already talked about the law of thermodynamics that states energy follows the path of least resistance. We've talked about how high pressure is a bunch of densely packed molecules and low pressure is a bunch of loosely packed molecules and that high pressure likes to move towards low pressure because energy follows the path of least resistance. So that creates high pressure cells and low pressure cells that are all over the earth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in a little bit to show you guys that. So as we start to zoom in here, we see the clouds systems that are all over the earth. This is a low pressure system here spinning counterclockwise because low pressure spins counterclockwise. This is another low pressure system. This is the one that's currently affecting us. It also spins counterclockwise. So these clouds that we see there are taken, uh, the pictures of them are being taken by a satellite that's out in space. That's what a satellite looks like as it takes pictures down upon us. And again, in this image, you can see the low pressure system here over the Gulf of Mexico. This is Florida. This is Mexico. And you can see it spinning counterclockwise. That's a storm. This is a storm. Storms in the northern hemisphere spin counterclockwise. Northern hemisphere means north of the equator. The equator is the line that goes right through the middle of the Earth that we talked about when we looked at the globe. If you're south of the equator, low pressure storms spin clockwise pretty neat. So moving onward, let's zoom back in just a little bit more here. So boom, there's the Earth. Let's animate some clouds on it now and explain what they mean. Alright guys, this is what the clouds look like from space. Obviously they don't have the green on here, that's a computer doing it. The green represents rain. But here's your clouds, all this gray is clouds. Here's the United States right here. We live right here in San Diego where you can see there's some green over us right now, so it's raining. So we'll talk about low pressure systems and high pressure systems. High pressure out here in the middle of the ocean, high pressure right here in the middle of the United States. And you can tell that because there's no clouds. High pressure is a very nice, beautiful, sunshiny day with no clouds. Low pressure are these pinwheels. If you're north of the equator, they spin counterclockwise. Here's the one affecting us right now. It's kind of weak. It's not that strong. This one's super strong down here. This is south of the equator now, so it's going to be spinning this way. And This is actually uh, what we would call a hurricane in the northern hemisphere, but it's a cyclone because it's in the southern hemisphere, and it's spinning clockwise. This is down by the island of Fiji which is south of Hawaii. Hawaii is out here. So that's pretty far away from us. If you look, it's bigger than the whole United States away. These weather systems are huge. Look at this one right here. It takes up almost the entire Atlantic Ocean. This one up here going into Canada, that's snow. So that's pretty neat. So let's zoom back in. Let's talk about the ones affecting us. So like I said, this one right here, it's swirling. Swirling uh, counterclockwise. There you go, you can see it swirling counterclockwise, a little more detail. That's going to hit us in a few days and bring some rain. This one right here though, this is the guy giving us rain right now. So if we zoom in, there you can see the circular pattern, the counterclockwise rotation. We'll zoom in, look, San Diego, here's Los Angeles, here's Tijuana. I'm going to keep zooming in, keep zooming in, San Diego, San Diego, and here's Escondido. Some of you guys live up there. I live over here in Poway. School's right about here. Here's school, so it'd be raining at your classroom right now. You guys would be doing inside recess. So, yeah. What I want you to remember is low pressure north of the equator. 
counterclockwise rotation as it moves along. It gives us rain. Okay, so just to recap, on the left here you see the high pressure spinning clockwise and the air moves downward and outward. And on the right, you see the low pressure vacuuming all that energy up into it and moving it aloft into the atmosphere where it can condense into clouds. And previously we talked about clouds and how they form as more and more moisture and more and more energy gets into the storm system and makes the cloud bigger and bigger. Now we need to talk about what happens once that cloud gets so big that it can no longer hold all the moisture that's within it. This is what happens when a cloud gets too much water. It rains! Hey everyone, we had a really fun time making this video for you guys. I hope you learned a lot. I miss you and I can't wait to see you again, every one of you. Goodbye guys.